All right, guys, what's up? I just watched through the Rising of the Shield Hero. Like, I started watching it yesterday. I got, like, a really late start on this. I, like, ran out of animes to watch for the season, so I was like, I watched the OVA of this, like, a while back, and I just, like, kind of forgot about it. And I really enjoyed this anime. It is so good. So I was talking about this in the Slime anime. Most animes so far that have been made at Isekai don't really show the struggles of coming to, like, the fantasy world or whatnot. This does it really well this is one of the animes that like actually tackles that subject because one thing they do really well this is gonna have spoilers by the way so first thing i'll say before i give you the spoilers is if you're looking for an isekai anime that has very mature over undertones and a very compelling story then this sh would be something to watch this is something that kind of fights against certain tropes and whatnot now to the spoilers so if you don't want spoilers that would be a good time to stop the video the main character is like one of the few characters in the show. There's four heroes that are summoned to this world, and he gets summoned as the shield hero. And the other three get like an actual weapon, like a spear, a sword, and a arrow, bow and arrow. And the dude's like, he does. He like picked up a book and learned about this world. While the other three, it seems like actually play games in their version of Japan, because apparently there's like alternate reality versions of Japan that they all got summoned from as well. And he gets the shield, and he doesn't know anything about the world, but the other three already have an understanding of it. And this guy keeps getting screwed. Like, it's not bad enough he's at a disadvantage, and he has a shield, which you would not think of as a weapon. Like, he cannot fight by himself at the start of the anime at all. So he's, like, struggling to kill, like, the lowest tier monsters with, like, his bare hands because he can't even equip a weapon. And he just keeps getting screwed over. Like, there's a chick that goes out of his way to, like, betray him and all these things, and he just keeps getting screwed. And then the whole thing changes when he meets, there's a slave trader that, like, he meets. And this is something that tackles that's pretty, like, interesting because usually you always think of slavery as, like, super bad, whatnot, things like that. Like, I've never heard anything good about slavery. But in this show, the character is more of, like, a father figure to the girl that he actually, like, enslaves to help him kill things because he can't do it himself. And at one point, when they're, like, freeing her, she like stands up to them to like tell them I don't want to be freed I want to be with this dude and this was something that was special in between us and he had saved me because I was sick I was dying and how many of you would have taken in a slave girl that was just dying and sickly so that was one thing it tackles and it does think it's very mature it like it tackles very serious things there are a lot of people dying in the show and the other characters, they are, they're treating the world like a game. The main character is not treating the world like a game. He's treating the people as if they're actually people, not NPCs. So, it's a neat take on it, because usually when you see an Isekai anime, it's always a neat dude that's like going into the world. This guy doesn't seem to be a neat. I, there might be some background information I met, like didn't get because I didn't read the manga, but he seems like somebody that's like interested in books. I don't really know too much about him from his Japanese world life. But I know he takes these characters very seriously. All the NPCs, like he goes out of his way when the first wave happens, which is an event in the world where like they have to protect or they're supposed to kill the monsters. Like you kill the big boss and the wave goes away. The three heroes just go straight to the big boss, the ones with actual weapons. And the shield hero goes and protects this whole village. And just like, he's like, I don't care about the boss. I need to save these people. So that just really shows his mindset versus the other ones. And the other heroes... As you, he goes through his, like, quest, he's traveling around, trying to make money before the wave, and, like, trying to, like, basically better get, get better gear for his party. And he's going around helping people, and while he's doing that, he's finding out about the escapades of the other heroes, which are really hurting the citizens, because they're not thinking things, thinking things through. Gosh, I just bit my tongue. Um... For instance, the sword hero kills a dragon, and then the dragon dies and decomposes, and, like, starts killing people from the plague so one thing i would like to wonder about ask people is if you've watched the slime anime and the shield hero anime which one do you kind of like perform prefer more because i've already made a uh, video about the slime anime and what i liked about it and i think there's still things it does really well like the development of the world and the characters but the shield hero seems to like he treats he treats it a little bit more seriously. Like the whole world to him seems like it's taken in a more serious manner, which I really enjoy. I like both of them. I feel like the slime's just more of a light-hearted, really good is Isekai anime, and this is a more of a darker toned Isekai anime. 
Also, one thing that this anime does, this is another bit, pretty big spoiler, is that this is something I always hated in Yuyashifu when I was a kid and I was watching it, was that in Yuyashifu would go as demon form and like defeat some big bad, just some random power, and then Kagome would cheer, like calm him down. This kind of has the same thing going because he has this rage shield and then the raccoon girl that he adopted always tends to calm him down because she's always been there for him. So, I don't know how I feel about that. He just like defeated a pretty big enemy by himself last episode when he's always had to rely on someone else. And I just don't know how I feel about it. Now there's a bigger bad that came out, so I want to see what they're going to do with that. But another thing is, one thing I'm starting to understand as I'm getting older and I've watched more anime is it's not about him being able to triumph every, like, come overcome everything with this demon power, this rage power he has. It's more of being able to overcome things, getting strong enough that he can overcome things without having to use it, I believe. I think that's hopefully where they go with it because I, it obviously hurts him to like use it. And it was one thing the raccoon girl said, she was like, why? I, the problem here is we're not strong enough to help him that he actually has to do this. So I'm really interested in how they're going to play that out a little bit further because that's something that I really never liked the trope of like, oh, the heroine could calm him down and everything's okay now after he went all demon. So, and I think another thing in Inuyasha, Inuyasha that made it a little bit more annoying to me, it's been a while, but I think one of the things was is that if he became a demon, he wasn't supposed to be able to go back, and he did. That, that kind of pissed me off because I was like, <laughs> so why would you tell us he can't come back if he goes full demon and then he just does it? So that was another thing. Also, there's it does comedic effect really well, and it puts, this is one thing in anime that's super important. It has enough pain and distraught for the main character that when things like actually good start happening f happening for him it makes it even more like enjoyable for the viewer like i get this anime actually like makes me a little bit anxious for, like the last episode when they were tackling the second wave because i was really hoping i was just like i don't want anything bad to happen to this dude because he's been like going around the world just fixing everybody's problems even though he tries to make people hate him he's a very good character i really enjoy his character because he he doesn't immediately recover for something. If he gets betrayed, he still feels betrayed. It has to be worked over. But at the same time, you can tell he really wants to do the right thing for the people in the world. He treats them like actual people. And the, the Kung Fu granny that showed up last episode, well, she showed up before last episode, but she's one of my favorite characters ever made. She's awesome. That's so dope. Uh, they're very original in the things they do. Granted, his shield kind of works the same as the slime. The slime's uh, eating power to an extent. It's, I don't think it's near as strong, but it's interesting. I also... I don't know. I don't know how long this series going to go. I know the manga's still going. I think it's at like volume 39 or something, so it could go for a while. But I don't really know how they're going to... I don't know. Really, I see his escapades, and I think those are interesting enough. I don't want to say it's not going to be interesting after a while, like it's going to get repetitive. Because really watching him go through his escapades and work through things with the villagers and with like resolving the problems that the other heroes create and like the other people in the royalty create for him it's it's pretty interesting i like it a lot and that's like in between the waves the waves are really like the main combat point of the series but there's only been like two or three episodes with him and all the rest of it's been like him traveling around and trying to get stronger and it's it's very entertaining and it has very mature overtones. Like, slime anime had mature overtones too, but this is a little bit more, like, people are dying everywhere, and you're actually seeing, like, real consequences to things. Like, if you leave meat out, it rots, and if it's dragon meat, obviously it's going to poison everyone. I didn't know that, but he figured it out because one of the heroes killed it and just left it there to, without burying it. Kind of makes sense. And then, like, when this one dude starts a revolution, and then in the north... He, he starts like taxing people like the old king did and everybody starts dying because basically he didn't solve the problem he just kind of disposed a guy that was already having like a semi-functioning system and replacing it with an even worse system which kills people so it's I would definitely give it a recommend like if you haven't started watching it I would and I would also like to see what you think about uh, all the Isekai animes you've watched if, you've, if you keep up with them regularly Overlord, Sword Art Online, Grimgar, No Ash. That was the one I couldn't remember last time. I don't know if that's the full name, but something like that. 
Girl Online, Log Horizon. I still gotta finish Log Horizon. I got to the second season, I just got so bored with it. Like, I really liked the first season, and then the second season just lost me. I don't know how. Like, I've tried to watch it a couple times, too, and I always, like, mess up on it. Um, and then, of course, the slime anime in this one. And then there's Diablo. That one's I hate, I guess. It's kind of just, like, super edgy. But it's lighthearted, I guess. It's not awful. It's I hate. But thanks for watching, as always, guys. If you could, please like and subscribe. And, uh, bye. Well, what's that one thing that girl says in that visual novel? Oh, I can't remember. I gotta remember that. It's like, Dan... Oh, she has some funny sounds she says for goodbye, and it's so funny. But I can't remember. All right, bye!